Hey everybody, it's Radiqua again. I'm here and I pray that everybody is blessed. I pray everybody is safe. Unfortunately, we are still in this pandemic. Um, it's so easy for us to get frustrated and be like, I'm so angry, I wanted to go here, I wanted to go there. And I, I, got, I had a moment of that. But then I thought about what is God thinking? What is God saying in this hour? What are we supposed to do in this hour? What are we supposed to be doing in this hour? And I'm going to do a video on that um, real soon. So I um, mainly wanted to come on here and definitely share the word that I feel goes along with the other videos that I was doing as far as like um, the finest fire. And I want to do a continuation onto that until the coming of the Lord. Um, so today's the today's word is I'm trying to do a teaching on finishing the race. Yes, it sounds all like, okay, what are you talking about? Finish the race. I'm not racing anywhere. <laughs> it's not about that. So I am saying that because in this Christian walk, we have to keep continue to move. We have to continue to go because in this walk, it's not easy, you know, it's just, it's easy for us. So to some people, it's like, oh, you know, it's just a religion. But to us that are born again, it's more than just a religion. It is a relationship with Christ. You know, he's done so much for us. He died on the cross for us. So the most we can do is to live for him. And while we live for him in this walk, it's going to be go through a lot. And in order for, to finish the race, we got to keep on running. We can't stop running. We can't look back, you know, because once we look back, how are we able to finish the race? So, like, as I was talking about with the refiner's fire from before, we have to realize the refiner's, the refiner's fire is a process that we have to continually go on. The, 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 the process of the refiner's fire of, of God cleaning, cleaning us up, it does not stop. We have to be cleaned up for the rest of the time that we're on this earth because we were born into sin. And since we are born into sin, he allows us to be born again. We are still in these, the body that, that, that only wants to do sin, if, if that makes sense. So we have to continually be cleansed. We have to be to continue to repent. So that's why we have to repent. A repent is to do over. We have to continue to repent. We have to continue to be cleaned by God. So until we get on the other side of heaven, you know, which is the promise, we have to continuously be cleansed to be more like Christ. So in this court, but in this walk, we have to realize that we're going to go through many trials, many tribulations, it doesn't stop just because we, you know, we become born again. It actually increases. And for most of you guys that are not born again, it seems like, oh, you know, I'm going to get saved. I'm going to become born again. And it, that's just it. Actually, as you become born again, the enemy is going to get mad. The enemy is going to attack you even further because he's mad that you're not doing what could have caused you to lose your soul. This is a battle. This is a spiritual warfare that many don't understand. So when you begin to stand for Christ, the enemy will fight you. And that's why we have to keep our armor on. So I wanted to um, do some, some scriptures. I'm going to read some scriptures for you guys to, to really help you understand where I'm coming from. And then I'm going to explain it. And then from there, then we're going to continue to go. So if you see me looking to the side, it's I took a lot of notes. So I'm trying to put everything all together. But for right now, we're going to go straight into reading the word. And in I have right here John... 1633. So let's go to John 16. So we when you go to John, sorry about that, guys. John 16 33 says, These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye may have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And like I said, I'm bringing this up because I want to let people know that although we're going to be running this race, we're going to go through many trials and tribulations. And in order for us to keep on going, we got to know, okay, I'm going to, people think, okay, I'm going to run this race or I'm going to be a Christian and this is going to be good. I don't, I don't, everything's going to be good. Wrong. 
This is what many people won't tell people that when they become a Christian, you're going to go through trials and tribulations, but we have to know who goes before us. So I'm going to read this again. It said, these things I have spoken unto you that in me, ye might have peace in the world. You, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we got to know that what he says, he's his word speaks for itself. We don't have to argue it. There's no adding or taking away from his word. It says what it says. You know, he's saying that you're going to have tribulation. You, you're going to go through some things, but he said, be of good cheer. I already overcome the world. So he, the world is already, he, he knows what goes before. So he's just telling you, I got this. Keep going. Cause I got this. So this is just to encourage us during this, during this race. The second one is James, James one. So let's get to James one guys. This gets so interesting when you really dig deep into his word. There's so many there's so many golden nuggets, if you want to say. There's so much that we can learn and so much that he wants to show us. But we have to be willing to dig deeper into his word because his word is life. His word brings life. It brings a, a abundance in life. Give me a second. So what is it? James, first James. So James 1, 2 through 8. So let's get there. And it actually says, patient, because I have the King James Version. So mine says patience and temptation. Okay. So, but it says my brethren count it all joy. And I'm reading up to eight. Okay. Count my brethren count it all joy when ye shall fall into div diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh, worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. First of all, we need to stop right there because He's saying that if you want, knowing these things, that trying of your faith. So when he tries your faith, it works patience. You're going to build patience. But he said, let patience have a perfect work. Meaning you have to learn patience. You have to experience learning and, and going through the process of learning patience. And when patience has her perfect work, when you have finally basically learned patience, he's saying that. He said, but, but let patience have a perfect work and that ye may be perfect. So when we had learned, had let patience have a perfect work, like we learn patience, it, at, it makes us perfect. He says that, that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. So that shows how important it is for us to have patience. We need patience. We need to learn patience because God is saying, telling us that it, we have it and let it have its perfect work. Like we, it, we let it perfect us. Then we won't want nothing because we're willing to wait, wait on his word, wait on that prayer, wait, patience. This is something, this is something we got to know. Let's go to five. So verse five, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and unbraideth not, and it shall be given, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. So mean you can't say, oh Lord, can you please bless me with this? And they'll be like, but I don't know if it's actually going to happen. We got to, it's either you have faith or you don't. If you don't have faith, don't pray. Ask God to fix your faith. Because if you pray and he knows that you're wavering, guess what's not going to happen? You're not going to get answered to that prayer. He wants faith pleases him, not just walking in and I don't know or just, you no walking confusion. That's not of God. So, but let him, let, let him ask in faith, wavering for he, nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and is tossed. Like they just lost. They don't know what to do because you're not having faith in God. If you're not having faith in God, who are you having faith in? If the devil is nothing but of confusion for this is um verse seven for let not, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in, his own, in all his ways. So another way that this, when we are running the race, what can hinder us while we're running this race is one, one could be not, not being patient and no being patient to me. It could be from us exercising. We got, we want to exercise. You got to stretch and you, and while we stretching, you could be like, Oh, I want to race already. But sometimes you can't just run to get in straight into racing. 
We have to exercise our body. We got to exercise. We got to have some spiritual exercise and we have to read the word. We have to fast. We have to pray. We cannot just think that we could just run this waste and everything's going to be fine. We have to exercise. How are you building up your faith? How are you building up your faith for the next, um, for the next trial, the next tribulation? How are you doing that? This is how we do it now. So with that, we have to understand that we have to have patience. We have to have patience and be willing to learn. We have to have patience and be willing for the process of learning first, learning how to run this race, learning how to um, be a Christian and, and be patient and learning first. So another thing is a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If you think you know so much, if you think that you, you want to say, oh, I know I raise your hand. We can't know so much to the point that we can't learn. Because then we get to a point where we are just ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of truth. You learn a little bit here, a little bit there, but you just feel like that's enough. So you just tell people what you think you know, but didn't really want to study thoroughly. So we really have to get to a point where we always want to learn and we're willing to be patient and not trying to just go run out and be this big Christian being better and bigger than everybody else when there's still things for you to learn. So before, you can't finish this race thinking you know everything. We have to be patient and be willing to exercise our body. We just be willing. Like, wait, it's, it's like any racer. They cannot, anybody that's going to be racing or running track, they can't just go out and run. And they're going to be like, no, exercise your body. You got to build up your lungs. Your lungs got to be used to you running all the time. Your legs got, because if you go out just running out of nowhere and doing like the track running and you haven't been exercised, what's going to happen? You're going to pull something. You're going to hurt yourself. So we have to be ready because these demons are not playing. This is a spiritual warfare. You have to be ready for battle at all times. So let's go. Let's get to um, 1 Peter 4.12. Y'all, there's so much meat and potato. This, when God gave me this, I'm like, okay, I got to get this out. I got to get this out. And like I said, there's times with me, I, I have kids and it, it's, it's, it's a lot. But I, there's times you got to be, listen, I told hubby, I'm like, babe, I love you. But I need you to take the kids so I can do God's word because God comes first, you know? So, and, and God loves that. You know, God knows that we have kids. He knows that we get busy. He, he understands that. But you take the time out and you go the extra mile for God and he'll do so much more for you. So we doing, we're right, right now we, oh, I'm going to go to first Peter 412, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to Romans. Okay. So first Peter chapter four, verses 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is which, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. So we got to know that when we go through a fiery trial, when we go through some things that we don't understand, we have to know that it's not nothing strange. We got to know that our Savior went through the same. He went through some things. Let's just think about what he went through. He said that we're going to go through some things too. So we can't think that just because we're saved now, everything's going to be perfect. Like when you run this race, you're not going to bump into nothing. You might not fall. People that ran track, ask them how many times they fell. Ask them how many times they got hurt. Ask them how many times they were having a bad day and this happened at home, but they had to keep on running. We have to run this race and there's no stopping. We got to acknowledge that. We can't stop just because things go bad. We, Jesus, there was things left and right going wrong and Jesus still had to stand up on that cross and not get off so we could be saved. Let's think about that. You know, so... Let's, I'm going to go to, like, to Romans. I'm going to try to stay on track, y'all. There's so much like, that God is doing right now. So we're going to go to the book, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. So it says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations. But let me read it from the top. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, but by, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not, all, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So 
I'm going to explain it how my pastor, Peter Michael Martinez, said it himself last sat on the Sabbath. He said, if you want to have experience, you need patience. If you want to have hope, you need experience. You have to experience hope. And if you want you, so if you want, if you want things, people ask for certain things, but you got to understand what you, what it takes to get it. You know what I mean? So knowing that tribulation work of patience. So when we go through these trials and tribulation, it work of patience. We learn patience, but we learn that whatever we're going through, we have to wait it out in order to get out. Even if God is with us or not, he's still going to help us through it. So we got to know that, excuse me, we have to know that no matter what, that God is going to be, he's going to go. We have to know that he goes before us and he will get us through anything. However, we have to be willing to have patience and it is very hard. And most people be like, oh, I'm not going to pray for patience because I know if I pray for patience, it's going to be tested. Yeah, Listen, I know it's so hard to have patience, especially listen, patient with kids, patient waiting online, patient this whole thing, this whole quarantine is testing everybody's patience, whether with their kids, whether going somewhere onto the store, you got to wait on these lines. This is the time to learn patience, but let patience have a perfect work. So we will not want anything because that's what God wants us to do is learn patience. We have, we can learn, we can learn better if we have patience because there's so much God wants to show us, but he can't because people are want to rush every all the time. We got to learn how to take it easy, slow it down. And this, what I'm saying, I'm not just saying for nobody. I'm just saying this for myself because I need patience too. There's times I just go, Ooh. you know, you get crazy. You're like, why not? I'm going to hurry up. But it's times that you got to, when you feel impatient, you got to really take it easy, take it all in and be like, wait a minute, am I being impatient here? Maybe God wants me to slow it down so I can hear him. So let's get back to, you know, so how we are to finish the race. I'm going to read you some more scriptures because it's so much scriptures that go to running this race. So in first Corinthians, first Corinthians nine, chapter nine, let's see, let's see, let's see this chapter nine, 24 to 27. I'm telling you guys, I, I took so much notes. I'm, I had to take, cause it was just too much stuff. So it's um, starting at um, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. So basically, and uh, let me finish it as a matter of fact. And every man that striveth for the mastery, for the mastery is temperate in all things. No, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so I, so fight, I, not as one that beateth the air, but I, I keep my body, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, least that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself be a castaway. So this, this was really good. So we run to receive a crown and which is that we went, we want to receive an incorruptible crown, but the people that run the race or run track and stuff like that, they do it to receive an actual crown, which is cool, but it's nothing like doing things for the kingdom of God, because we see what we see is spiritual. What we see is, is eternal. You understand what I'm saying? So we do that to receive a crown, but it's to be with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We have, we are here to when while we run in this work race, it's it's also for us. We're supposed to be doing a work for God. What are what is your job? What does God tell you to do? When He comes back, what is He going to tell you? What is He going to say that you done? I told you to do something. What did you do for me while on earth? So this is something we have. We we running. This is part of that race. Is working. Keep on going. Don't stop. And so he's saying, I run. He run and he said, I run not as uncertain, but so I fight. When we fight, this is the, this is that, this here again is a spiritual warfare. It doesn't stop. We got to keep on fighting the good fight of faith. We cannot quit. It's going to be hard. It's going to be times where it's just like, I can't deal with this no more. I have attacks going each and every way. Let me tell you, the word of God has his promises. We got to go on with the promises of God. Even Jesus was tempted. And as he was tempted, when he tried to, when he, he didn't eat for 40 days, 
What did he do? He spoke the word of God. We got to speak the word of God over our lives. We got to know and speak the promises of, of God so we can encourage ourselves. Speak in the Holy Spirit, you know, speak, 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 um, unknown tongue. Like we have to continue to edify ourselves. So, and it says also, I, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. We have to let our bodies, we have to let our flesh die daily. Sin can stop us from running fast as we want to run and, and run at a good pace. It slows us down. Sin will always slow us down at all times. And we're going to get there. So we are to, uh, let me um go to Hebrews. I'm telling you, I got so much words. I'm trying to, I'm so excited to bring this out. And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. So, yeah, oh, and I was supposed to go to Romans, wasn't I? Give me a second. I was supposed to go to Romans. So, I'm going to get to Romans. But, yeah, you guys, we have to really. Okay, I did read Romans already. Sorry about that. So, we're going to go to Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. But yeah, like I was saying, we have to realize that it's not going to be a, a easy walk. It's none of this is going to be, um, none of this is going to be easy. We can't sit here and act like, oh, I'm going to be okay. <coughs> I got this. No, we don't. <laughs> we need help, but we're going to get there. I, I'm telling you, I got so much word. So it's going to be Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. So wherefore seeing we also are com compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easy besets us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So, <clears throat> and I'm going to read two because it, it cause finishes. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and the set that, that um, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of, of, of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Least ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted unto blood striving against, against sin. So we got to remember. Even when things get hard to run this race as being a Christian. We have to understand that Jesus went before us. Okay was on this earth and had to, he went through temptation. He went through stuff that we can't even fathom being, being betrayed, being beaten, being talked about, being, being called every name and still got up and was about the father's business. He did not turn his back on God. He kept, and when it got hard, what did he do more? Pray. We ought to do what God did. What Jesus did. We know that when G whatever Jesus did, we are to mimic Christ. Don't mimic man, mimic Christ. So when he was on this earth, he had every temptation. He had to fight it off. But what did he do? He prayed and he spoke the word of God because the word of God is life. That is the sword. It is what can fight off these demons. It is can it is what's gonna help us fight these this battle that we're in for life until we, he comes so when we realize that his word is that then we can know that we can endure all things through christ who gives us strength we need strength from christ we cannot do this by ourselves <clears throat> so we know that he did he, he went before us he's the author and finisher of our faith he endured the cross so remember what whatever he did we know we can get through it because remember, that's anytime you go through something hard and you feel like you can't finish this race, this race to get to heaven, that we got to be like, you can't give up. There's no time to give it up. There's no time. We're going to go to Philippians. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. We're going to go to Philippians. We're going to go back to Philippians. I don't know if I read this, so I'm going to get to it. So we're going to go to Philippians chapter 3. 12 to 14. So it says, not as though I already attained either were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended for Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, 
but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So we do not look for what's behind. What happened when somebody looked behind when they was in the Bible? What happened? What happened to Lot's wife? She turned to a pillar of salt because there's nothing behind us. Anything that's behind us is in the past. What's in the past? When Before we became born again, what was in the past? Sin, fleshly ways, fleshly thoughts, and all of this stuff. So we got to know in order while we are pacing, we're running, we're pacing, we're getting, we see that we're going to make it. We cannot get to the point of saying, let me just go back because I remember some stuff from before. Let me just go back to the other sin. You are, you're going to stop how far you got in this walk with God to go look back and, and go say, you want to go back to sinning? Let me tell you something. You're going to walk back and it's going to be hard for you to come back with, to the same spot you was in. It's better for you to have, to not have known God than to have known him and go and just go back. Like that's a, that's a big diss to God. What are you doing? God is way better than sin. And yes, everybody will say, oh, it's, you know, but it's fun. And at the moment, it's a moment of fun, but then it leads to death. Is it really worth it? And the consequences, forget about it. Let's get to the book of Isaiah. Because we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 40. Ch Isaiah chapter 40. I try to bookmark it because I stay losing with it, um, the book of Isaiah is at. <laughs> I say, oh, it's all right. I'm not ashamed to say I got to go searching. And my Bible is so old, y'all. It's really old, but it's okay. God is with me. So chapter, so it's Isaiah 40. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, I think it says 25 to 31. No, I think it was 28. I write fast, so my, I'm trying to understand my own high and writing. Y'all listen, it's okay. So chapter 40, I think it's 28. Let me look. Okay, I'm thinking it is. Yes, okay. So I think we're going to start at uh, 40 to 28 to 31. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the, of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So anybody that's walking during this race and get feels tired, they feel I've been hit every, every which way. I try to run faster. I try to fast. I try to pray. And every time I pray for my spouse, every time I pray for, for this person, every time I pray for my marriage, every time I pray for my child, I feel like I can't go no more. I feel like this is too much. Why am I getting attacked? My my boss is getting on my nerve. I'm failing at this test. I've been trying. I've been trying. I've been praying. I've been praying. Let's go back to what word, God's word says. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So who we have to wait here, go patience again. We need patience in order to wait, right? So, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. So with who? With God. <laughs> we shall not faint. The God's word is just right there. We cannot fall. We cannot fail with God. You go back to that sin if you want to, and you're going to fail, you're going to fall, and you're not going to be able to get up. But with God, he'll give you strength. He'll make sure that you, he makes sure that even if you fall, he'll get you back up. Give you the strength. You will not faint. Look, come on, y'all. This word don't make you make you want to get up and shout. I don't know what word will because that right there is enough. You we can we can trust God's word. 
in Galatians, in Galatians 6, chapter 6, let's get there. We almost, we almost, we almost finished, y'all. But I got to get, I had to get this word out. So um, Galatians 6, and I, it's got to be a 9. <laughs> okay, so chapter 6, um, verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So even if we get things get hard and we, we are trying, you don't faint. Pray. Even when Jesus got weak, what did he do? He kept on saying, I'm going to, you know, he kept on praying. You pray and pray and pray and, and just encourage yourself and even ask others to pray for you. So no matter how hard it gets, we cannot feel like we are to, and I'm going to read what I wrote. We are to keep going despite how hard it gets. Whatever from, from, from whatever, if, so if it's heartache, we got to get out of our family. If it's heartaches, if it's, we having bad times. It could be from your job. We could lose our job. People are losing their jobs right now because of this whole pandemic. You know, we have to remember that we are not alone. It is God that always gives us strength. So we have to know that God is going to be with us despite what's going on. So we, we can go through, we can, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. We have to remember that. And as I just read, we cannot grow weary and we're trying to understand things because we have to remember, he says, lean not to your own understanding, but in, in everything we are to trust him. So we have to trust him during this pandemic. Like I said, I'm trying, I'm not trying not to go there because I'm trying to do a video to encourage you guys during this pandemic and what he wants us to do. So that's going to be another video that's coming up. So just give me a break. Not just give me some time, not a break. <laughs> Give me a, give me some time so I can get to and do a study. It's not going to be as long as this video, but I definitely want you guys to really grasp what I'm saying during this time that God has given me to, um, make sure you guys know what to do during this time of a, a pandemic. So this is definitely, I'm going to read my notes. So it definitely, I wrote that this is to encourage you not to look back to being tempted to go back to living in sin, which I said before, when you walk um, with Christ, the devil will put you down and you will go through a trial or tribulation as to say, he, he, so the devil, when you go through trials and tribulation, the devil will begin speaking to you how he spoke to Eve and the, uh, he, when he spoke to Eve, he literally was trying not only to tempt her, but to question the word of God because the word of God is God. So we have to remember what the devil does. He questions the very word of God. So that's how you know it's the enemy because God is always going to back up his word. So when you go through a trial or tribulation, you won't, you got to know not to quit because God will always be there for you. He has not forgotten you. This, that's what the devil going to say. The devil going to say, Oh, Jesus, um, God forgotten you. He hasn't answered your prayer. Look at him. Look at, look at everything that's going on. He hasn't answered you yet. You know, just give up this because God is not answering you for the moment does not mean that he don't love you. Does not mean that he's not with you. There's times he wants you to be silent and trust him and have patience continue to run this race this walk of being a christian but you got to know that there's times that if he doesn't answer you doesn't mean that he doesn't love you it means that wait upon me when you wait you won't fail you won't fall he has us it's like he's holding us and gripping us he's hugging us for those that are going through some hard times hang in there you're gonna get through this jesus went through it all look at job he had God and trusted God the whole time. He went through a lot and God got him out of it. Come on, y'all. Trying to encourage you guys. In hard times, we have to push past how we feel and seek God and speak his promises over ourselves. We have to speak his yes and amen over ourselves because it's truth. It brings life and it helps us. We can get through this. Jesus went through a lot on this earth, as I said before. He was the very example of how and who we should be like, who we should mimic, who we should mirror while on this earth. So if we want to know how to finish this race, we finish this race being more like Christ. So how was Christ? Let's get back to the, let's get back to the, the, the um, second, the, the test, the new Testament. Let's go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let's read these scriptures and follow with how Jesus was. How was his, 
What, what did he do? How did he respond to this? That's how we should respond to life. That's how we should respond to this walk that we are walking. So in order to finish the race, we have to be willing to be pruned by God. This is another one, y'all. Okay, so as we know, we can do absolutely nothing without God. And I'm going to read that right quick. And John... So, in, sorry, 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 sorry. So in John 15, let's get to 15 because this one is so good. John 15, 2. Um, I'm going to be 15, 15, 1 and then go into 2. I am the vine. I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he is taken away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth. He purged it that it may bring forth more fruit. So basically, we know we can do nothing without God. Okay. And I can even go further. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So we cannot do anything without God. We absolutely need him. We absolutely need him through trials and tribulations, through good times, through bad times, through the best times of our lives. We need him. We need him to run this race. So with that, he's going to prune us. So that, what happens, a like perfect example, uh, like a planner. When a planter decides to farm, um, they start, they, you know, they start to plant their plants and everything. And as it's growing, as we're growing in Christ, he has to start pruning. Why do you have to start pruning? I took some notes on that. It, they, they start pruning to stop it from diseases, bugs, and to clean. So with, with that, to clean the dead or the dying um, leaves. With us as being Christians, that disease could be sin. So if we have sin in our lives, as being a Christian, we have little sin that we, we can't get rid of. We have uh, an addiction we can't get rid of. We have uh, something that we continue to do, uh, habitual sin. It could be or something that you're doing, but God, you don't recognize, recognize God's like, I'm, let me break this off. Oh, this, this is dying off. Like this sin that they're doing, I'm pulling this off. God has to continue to prune us so we could be perfect. So we can look beautiful. You get what I'm saying? So we can continue. He's like, okay, why are you running this face? I, let me let me clean you up right quick. Let me dust you off. Wait, wait, before you get over, I got to clean you up because we got to understand God is holy. So if God is holy, he said in order for us to enter his kingdom, we have to be blemished and spot free. So in order for us to be blemished, he got to keep on cleaning us. He's holy. We were born into sin. We, we, so if we're born into something, that means even while we're born again, we got to continue to be clean to be anything like him. So we're going to have to, we're going to, the whole, this whole process, like I said, this race is a process. This is, it's a nonstop process till God says you made it, you know? So we can, we can get slowed down from unrepentant sin. Cause if you're not repentant, then obviously that sin is still remaining. And whatever, whatever sin remains and you don't repent of it, it becomes a stronghold. The devil creates a stronghold in your life and it's hard for you to get rid of the sin. It's better to repent. And have sanity and have a sound mind that unrepentant sin and you're losing your mind. You're wondering why you can't concentrate. You can't focus. It is God that gives us focus. If we could do nothing without God, how do you think you have a sound mind without God? We need him. You can't fo focus. You can't concentrate. This is, I can't do this. I'm, you're all over the place. When's the last time you asked God to help you? When's the last time you actually went into total repentance to say, Lord, I am a filth. Clean me up totally from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Wash me. This is something we need to do. And totally surrendering to him. Not half stepping and trying to keep a bit of a sin because it feels good or because it's, it seems fun. Because that's why you're never truly delivered. Come on, y'all. So, like I was saying, a person who runs track, they only finish the race if they could keep running, even a, as a relay race. So, another thing we need to know, I didn't do points or bullet points, but this is the main point that I think is the most important, is that 
we have to, we can't do this walk alone. Not only do we have Christ, but God wants us to be in tune with other people. We have, we are the church since we are the church. And right now saying per se, we cannot be in the church, but even if you can't be in the church, we are still to have other brothers and sisters in Christ, like-minded brothers and sisters in Christ that could be there for us. We, we have to, just like a relay race, when they are, when there's a relay race, they're running this race. And as they get a further enough, they have to t put on, take the baton and give it to somebody else. Am I right? So, um, they have to pass it along. So even as a relay race, they have to remain focused on what's ahead and rely on their brethren to help them finish well. So we have to, they have to, if they don't, if that other person that is waiting for the thing, if they fall back or if they look back at the sin and they go back into sin and, and, and the other person is still willing to walk this and finish this race as being a Christian and get to the, um, the promised land, how you stopping you, it's like a chain reaction. If I go back to sinning, I'm stopping you. Like we can't, this is, this is a perfect example as pastors, pastors, if they, if they not feeding the flock the way they supposed to, and there's so many sheep that is hungry and they feed and they want to walk in sin. And when they start walking in sin, guess what happens? It's a domino effect. Oh, you fell the, okay. It's okay for me to go back to, no, it's not okay. It's never okay to go back into sin. One person looks back or everybody going to feel like it's okay to look back. We got to keep on looking forward towards the mark so we can get the crown that is, that is eternal. We got to keep on looking forward. Y'all come on now. In order for us to really finish well, we need our brethren. We need somebody to call on. We know we can't do this race without one another. If one falls, we got to be willing to pick them up. If, if one is going through something or trial or tribulation, we are, we have to be there to pray them through. We are to love. We, we have to be, we have to be willing to love on others. We got to be willing to be compassionate and love and be like, okay, you know what? I've been there before. I, I ran, I was running that same race. I got to that corner and I fell and I fell, but then I, God got me back up. You got to tell them what you went through so how, to, to show them how they can get back up. We fall, we go through trials and tribulation, but we get through it. We're not alone. What you're going through is somebody else. What you're going through when you finish and God gets you through it, help somebody else. It's not meant for you to stay quiet. It's meant for you because that's how we all help each other out. The devil don't want that. He wants you to stay silent to the point of depression and God forbid suicide. We have to be able to speak it out. I went through this and I'm going to tell you, you're going to get through this because God got me through. That's your testimony. Your testimony can get somebody else saved. This is what it's all about. Sharing the gospel, going to all the world and preach the gospel. So we are to love and be there and not just save ourselves, but I'll help others get to finish this race. We cannot be selfish trying to finish this race. There's going to be people that's going to fall. We got to be able to pick them up and say, no, you're going to make it. Look at me. You're going to make it. You see, you ever see somebody trying to run a race and then they fall and you have that one, that one godly person that be willing to pick you up and say, I don't care if I come in last, at least I finished, but you're going to finish with me. We're not going to let you fall. We don't let our brethren stand, step back and especially they run in this race and it's hard for them and they really going hard because this, it's not going to be easy. This race, this is not an easy race. It's hard. But let me tell you, it's not impossible with God. Nothing's impossible with God. We have to be willing to be compassionate and we'll pick up our brother if they fall to we could, if they could finish the, um, the race well as, as well. It's not just about, oh, I'm finished before you. No, it's about finishing, period. Y'all, let me finish reading this. But it says in Corinthians 9, 24, 25, we are running for not a temporary crown, but eternal one for my father. In Acts 20, 24, we are, we have to, let me, let me see. I'm, instead of just saying it, I'm going to read it. I've been reading this whole time, so I'm not going to stop. So in Acts 20, 24, and we are almost finished, you guys. I had to get on here. And when I say everything I'm saying, I'm probably not even going to remember because I pray for the Holy Spirit to take over and he's doing it. So I'm excited, guys. So 20, 24, and it says, but none of these things, none of these things move me, neither, I, neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So he's saying, um, Paul was saying like, nothing, nothing's moving me. I just want to finish this race. I, I, 
I, he's saying, I count my life dead unto myself so that I might finish my course. I want to finish it with joy, knowing that I preached the word. He did his, he did what God called him to do. So that's what we want to finish. That's to be our, our, our reasons to run and finish. We have to finish what, what God set us out to do so we can say what Paul was able to say in second Timothy four, seven. Let's get there. Let's get to second Timothy four, seven, y'all. Let's see what, what he said in second Timothy four, chapter four, verses seven, Paul was able to say, because he was able to finish said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So what is this all about? This is all about finishing well, but as well, we want to have faith. We need to have faith in God. And no matter what happens, we keep our faith and keep on the full armor of God and study what the full armor of God is. So we have to know that we have to be able to keep the faith. We do this to receive our heavenly crown and to finally hear, to finally be able to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what we're going to hear when we finish. That is good. You ever finished, you ever run a race, all these people that finished the race, they, the first thing they feel, they are shocked. I went through all these trials and tribulations. Sorry if you're here. My son's probably not going to do it. But you all, we all get to a point where we want to finish well. We we keep the faith the whole time. The main thing that God wants, to, the devil wants us to knock off, is having faith in God because faith pleases God. So we have to keep the faith, knowing Lord, no matter how hard things get, help my faith. Help me not lose faith in you. Help me not see my trouble and make it bigger than you. We got to see God. Bigger than our situation, bigger than how we feel. And it's hard. Oh, it's hard. Jesus is hard, especially for those that lose somebody and they don't understand why this person's sick, why this has to happen. We don't know, but all we can do is say, Lord, I trust you. Because when we say, Lord, I trust you, that means no matter what it is, when I, if I'm supposed to love you with all my mind, soul, and my body, then no matter what is going on in this earth, I got to trust that you know what know and want what's best for me. And if this has to happen in order for, for things to keep on going, I may not understand now, but you said you would show me later. So I'm going to keep and, and ask for strength. This time we're not going to get answers, but he will give us strength. And with that strength, he will give us joy. And with that joy, we can have peace. In order to have that, we have to have faith that God knows what he's doing. So in order for us to help to, to finish this race, we have, and so we can hear well done in my good and faithful servant. We have to continue no matter what to stay in faith, fight the good fight of faith and finish the race. Don't stop guys. Continue running the race because we are soon, we at the last of the last days, we are here. There's so much going on in this world. And soon I'm going to try to do the end time stuff and let people know what's going on. Um, but this, I had to get out. It's very important. And I pray that this bless you. If it bless you, please share it. Um, so it could get out there so it could encourage others. God bless you guys. I love you guys. Bye-bye.